Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we will be discussing about the current and future state of data analytics. We will discuss how data analytics is being currently used by different industries and different domains and how different companies are leveraging this technology to create different solutions for their customers. So the first topic is industry penetration. So we will discuss how data analytics has penetrated into different industries. So be it uh, medical industry, finance industry, tech industry, retail, FMCG, you know, sales, marketing, HR. So none of the industry is untouched by data and analytics simply because of the fact that everyone on the internet is generating data and every industry is also generating data. And what do they do with this data? They need to analyze it and build uh, custom solutions for their customers. So the first uh, industry that we can discuss about is technology. Of course, uh, data analytics is being used over there to create better decisions and optimize operations. So one example I can think of is, for example, in your company, you have a logistic domain. Okay, and then uh, you are given a task to optimize your logistic. So through data and analytics, you can see, okay, this, uh, the truck logistic system that you have incorporated in your company. So you can find the most optimized route that every truck can follow so that the expenditure on the fuel is minimized and the delivery of the product is faster than before okay this is how it is being used in the logistic industries second is finance of course in finance data analytics is being used extensively especially for finance health reporting of a company so every company is generating financial data okay they cannot exist without financial data and they have to us check their financial health either quarterly monthly or yearly but they have to do that so different metrics and different uh, uh, keep data points are are obtained for example we need to analyze our net operating profit before tax net operating profit after taxes we need to check what taxes we have paid we need to check our liabilities uh, operating cash flows uh, acute taxes and all those financial aspects so we have huge amount of data let's say in millions and billions and uh, we need to aggregate all of that data okay make some visualization out of it and present it to the business stakeholders earlier it was done uh, primarily using excel okay but uh, since the data is getting more and more complex and also the volume of data is increasing substantially now we have to move towards more advanced technology that are better equipped to handle such huge volumes of data. That is, we might need to use uh, some advanced in business intelligence tools like Power BI, okay? Some advanced technology to store that data because we cannot store millions and billions of data in Excel, all right? So the second, um, second application that we can think of is detecting the financial fraud. Uh, so after COVID, we all have moved to mobiles and also with the uh, geo revolution, we are being using internet uh, uh, more than ever. So for any kind of banking operation that we have to perform, we are switching to mobile apps and that is also increasing the risk of a fraud transactions. So these mobile apps collects your data like which device you are operating upon, okay, which location you are uh, using your mobile app so that they can you know track uh, if if there is any possibility of a financial fraud for your transaction or not so if you install that same app in some other device they will get to know that algorithm will get to know okay they have you are now using a different device and you have never used it before now you have to re-authenticate again we will send you an otp again you have to pass enter the password enter the pin and then only you will be able to log in and sometimes if a certain parameters have passed and it, it detects that there is a change in location as well along with other parameters change it may also ask you to you know re-enter your password and it, it ha personally happened with me as well i changed my location from delhi to bangalore and then uh, i got logged off from my internet uh, banking app and then i had to enter the password again so it is also being used uh, for algorithmic tradings so algorithms are being set and our predefined rules are being feeded into the algorithms and they take huge huge volumes of trade on their own basis and are generating you know good results as as with respect to the human traders so it is being used ex extensively in the marketing industries to you know do all sort of marketing analysis 
consumer targeting, understand, understanding their buying patterns, running effective ad campaigns, running effective targeted campaigns and all those sort of things. So once we understand our consumer, what are their likes, what are their dislikes, how do they buy, which device they prefer while shopping, what is the most you know common e-commerce platform they are shopping upon. So once we get all sort of all that sort of data, we can easily run effective ad campaigns so that we can target our exact customer and kind of force them to fall in our funnel so that they end up purchasing our product if it is relevant to them. And also when we are running different kind of ad campaigns, we are again generating data. So for example, I am running three different ad campaigns. One will lead my customers to WhatsApp, my WhatsApp number if they click on it. One will lead to my customers to my site and one is used for just gathering the leads. So once I run these three campaigns, I can see, okay, uh, over here, this ad, this campaign is giving me more response as uh, more number of uh, people are clicking on it. And even in the email campaign, so for example, when you get the emails, so they can track whether you have opened the email or not. After opening, how much time you have spent on that email? Have you clicked inside the email or not? So all these uh, data points are collected and they are being used heavily in you know optimizing your ad campaigns uh, and targeting the exact customers that they want. So the next industry it is being used is retail of course it is being used for doing the descriptive sales analysis so what do we mean by descriptive sales analysis so it's it's essentially analyzing our historic data so retail giants like walmart they generate huge amount of transactional data okay it's in billions and every day they are generating huge amount of data and they need to analyze it so they store this data in their data warehouse and use visualization techniques uh, to see the buying pattern which product is performing well which gender is buying more product whether your product is performing well on weekends or weekdays during festive season which brand is performing well why it is performing well was there a good ad campaign was there was a celebrity face behind that and all those analysis can be done it is also used for inventory management of course when we have uh, you know huge uh, retail retailers like dmart or walmart uh, they have huge inventory in their warehouses, in their storage uh, spaces and they it is nearly impossible for the human to track all that. So for inventory management it is being used. So you know once we purchase a product and then we go to the billing counter they scan our barcode. So the, uh, once we, they scan into it their database gets to know okay these two products have been bought and I have to remove these two uh, from uh, my inventory and this is how tagging work and this is how inventory is managed in big stores. So before there is a crunch or before there is a shortage of a product they get to know okay this is this is the product which i might have to order and i need to procure and also they they uh, try to give a seamless experience so for example uh, whenever we are shopping and we go to the payments page we often see that our address is automatically filled okay and whenever we are doing the payment our payment details are automatically filled so uh, all these small small things you know add up and make a huge difference in our buying pattern and it is also used to understand the consumer mindset so for example uh, let's say you have a retail store over here, um, somewhere and then uh, okay, let me clear it So let's say you have a retail store somewhere okay now you get to know that this is a retail store so you can spare me for my drawing now you get to know that the inflow of the customers that you have are not millennials they are either uh, the people are either greater than you know uh, 40 years of age or they are uh, in the mid age or they are children but we are not getting millennials and the products that I have spare me if my spelling is wrong so the products that I have in my store are there they are targeted for millennials so now what I decided I decided to run a, a strategy that uh, let me have a 3d printer okay next to my store let me have a 3d printer and what this 3d printer will do the user can come they can select their mobile cover, they can select different design, they can customize their design as well and then when they like it, they can 3D print it. Okay, they can 3D print it 
uh, they can 3d print their mobile covers now with this strategy uh, you start to realize okay there has been more footfalls of millennials so this is just a demo strategy that i am showing you but for this to happen for me to realize that millennials are not coming to my shop i need to first of all you know get that data i need to visualize and understand that data i cannot have a dream okay millennials are not coming uh, uh, you understand that we need a a way to visualize something we need a way so that everything is structured in a format and i can quickly draw inside okay this is the problem and this is the solution if i am doing if this don't work i'll go for the next strategy but for that i know i should know what is happening right now with my business okay and what else of course it it uh, helps in supply chain management it helps in capacity planning and demand uh, forecasting the demand so it can be used to forecast okay i, I know that during this uh, based upon my previous trends and based upon this this logic i know that uh, my demand for this product is going to rise so i very well uh, procure that even if i have that product in sufficient quantity but i know that demand is going to rise i will procure that from my suppliers and manufacturers so this is how you know data and analytics is being used in different industries so let's see what is the demand trend of data and analytics so if we look into the job statistics glassdoor ranked data science as number 2 job in 2021 and data science is expected to grow by 28% uh through 2026 okay this is as per us bureau of labor statistics and in 2020 alone around 2.7 million jobs were listed and 11.5 million new jobs Uh, are expected to open in the coming 5 years these numbers are huge and they really reflect that we really have a very bright future for data and analytics because data is not going to be less data is going to increase okay as we move forward and as we start spending more time on the internet if we look into the industry statistic data industry data analytics industry will be worth 100 almost 133 billion dollar by 2026 and if we look into the key players that are uh, you know recruiting uh, data analytics pro- uh, professionals so these are uber uh, our big four companies like deloitte pwc kpmg because they have clients they have consulting clients and then they have to provide them data analytics solution amazon of course because it generates huge amount of data netflix we also have a very interesting case study on netflix in our coming lectures uh google google has the most amount of data because whatever we are doing we are doing on google mckinsey jp morgan oracle sap zomato swiggy uh, all these companies are done so all these companies are investing heavily in data analytics because they now tend to understand that data is the new oil and since there are few companies who have you know leveraged this technology to their best potential uh other companies have also started to realize okay they also need to work upon it now uh, this was the summarized infographics and i find it very very meaningful okay this essentially summarizes the whole uh, overview of the data analytics so by solution we can have data management fraud and security as we discussed data mining data mining as in discovering the trends and patterns in huge set of data data monitoring of course we need to monitor our data as well what is the ingestion so whenever we are generating new data how is being ingested in our database uh, by application we have inter- enterprise resource planning so these are erp solutions so erp is a kind of software that track uh, almost all the operations of a company so for example they may track accounting finance how is my hr performing how is my marketing performance so all of these things you can see in one place uh it is used in supply chain management as we discussed in human resource management of course uh, so for example if there is a crunch in the employees the hrs will be easily able to you know see that okay in this department i have a crunch these people are resigning and they only have two months of notice period left so better i keep uh, i start recruiting and in this project better i better uh, keep some uh some stuff extra so that i the my projects run seamlessly okay and if i need to maintain the gender ratio i need to uh, I, i can easily see that okay fine i will gen- i will recruit women now or i will recruit men if if the ratio is not balanced 
it is used for database for by deployment it is used by cloud and by on premises so you don't have to worry about it i have a detailed lecture on cloud and on premises which is yet very important concept by organization size of course if you are a large organization the kind of tools and technologies that i will be suggesting to you uh, for implementing a data analytics solution will be different uh, than if you are a smaller medium enterprise okay by function of course marketing analytics sales accounting finance operations hr analytics all this we have discussed so this is uh, what the current state of uh, data analytics is i hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned a lot of new things in this i'll see you in my next lecture